I have a lot of fun testing out portable battery packs. Probably too much. And every time I do, I always get comments afterwards asking for more power. So when Blue Eddie sent me an email asking if I wanted to test out the AC200P, I said yes. There are a few things that set this battery pack apart from some of the other battery packs that I've tested. One of those is the battery. This has a lithium iron phosphate battery in it rather than just the typical lithium ion batteries you see in that. And the advantage to this type of battery is it has a much longer lifespan. You can use it a lot more. This thing will have a lifespan of thousands of cycles compared to 500 to 1000 for the lithium ion batteries. The downside to the lithium ion phosphate batteries is they're not nearly as energy dense. You've got about two thirds of the energy density compared to lithium ion batteries batteries, which is why you see a lot of the lithium ion batteries in the portable setups. This thing is heavy. To have the power it has, it has to have a much larger, heavier battery. It's about 60 pounds and it really hurts the portability of it. Thankfully, this makes up for it with just sheer capacity. This thing has a 2000 watt hour battery and that's about 150 amp hour equivalent at 12 volts. And it's got a ton of outputs on it too. Uh, starting over here, you've got a 12 volt regulator, 12 volt output and that's a 10 amp output. So that's gonna be good for pretty much everything you want to power, including diesel heaters can be plugged into this. Uh, you have a bunch of USB outputs along the bottom, so all your USB devices. Uh, it includes a 60 watt USB-C, so you can charge things like a MacBook or a Chromebook quickly on there. On top, you've got two 15 watt charging pads for your cell phone, so you can charge those wirelessly. It's cool, it works well. I'm not sure, I, you know, it's not something I've ever really used before. My iPhone works with them, but I don't find myself using that kind of thing. So I don't know how usable it is in the real world. Finally, up here at the top, you have six 110 volt outlets, and these are powered by a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter that can deal with surges up to 4,800 watts. That's a lot of power. That's actually, when you convert it to amps, that's about 18 amps, and most of your household outlets are 15 amps or on a 15 amp breaker. So this can power anything that you plug into the regular outlets in your house. Everything's controlled through this little screen here. So if I turn on the battery, you'll see it'll load up for a few seconds. And it should give me, in the middle, I've got the state of charge of the battery. So right now it's at 100%. Around the outside, I've got the inputs and the outputs. So it'll show me total wattage in, total wattage out. Uh, and then I can turn on the DC there and turn on the AC outputs there. And I can go through the settings on the screen and see a bunch of data as well. So I can see the inputs, the outputs, I can see any fault codes. Uh, it actually tells you how much carbon dioxide you've saved as well by using solar and hopefully you'll make up for the construction of this battery. And while it's all really cool seeing it all on this screen, I do have a couple of issues. One of them is it is almost impossible to see this in direct sunlight. And the other is it seems kind of vulnerable. I found myself picking this up and holding it against my belt buckle, something like that, or putting it in the vehicle. And I'm really worried I'm gonna break this. And if I break the screen, I can't turn on anything. I can't turn on or off, or I certainly can't turn on the AC and DC outputs. And what that would mean is you'd have a really big and heavy paperweight. Now, one of the great things about Blue Eddie is I know that they listen to the feedback, so I'd love to see some kind of manual control for these, maybe something like this button. That way, not only do you not have to worry about looking at the screen, but you also don't have to worry about it if it breaks. To charge this, you kind of have four options. You've got the wall charger, you've got the car charger, and you've got solar, but you can actually charge it with solar and the wall charger at the same time. The way I see it, the car charger is kind of useless. It's gonna take you 18 hours for a full charge on here. So you're better off if that's what you wanna do. If you want something that's gonna be in your vehicle permanently, you're better off doing a dual battery setup with a DC to DC charger. A much better option is to charge it with this enormous power brick. This thing will charge it or fully charge it in about six hours, or you can buy a second one of these and plug them both in at the same time and charge the whole thing in about three. But the real strength of this is the solar charging. A lot of these things are marketed as solar generators, and I think it's a little cheesy, a little gimmicky to call them that, but I actually think that this one earns the title of solar generator, and that's because it has an enormous 700 watt solar input, and because it weighs about as much as a small power station. Through the Blue Eddy website, you can bundle this with three of these 120 watt solar panels, and I actually really like these panels. These are, they're fairly lightweight, they're very compact, and they're made by SunPower that make really good solar cells. To set 
them up, you hook up all of the panels in series using the MC4 connectors. These are IP67 rated and the junction box in here is as well. The panels themselves are IP54. So technically these things are kind of they're rainproof, waterproof to some extent. I talked to Blue Eddie about just how waterproof they are and they said if you left these out and it rained, there was a rainstorm, it wouldn't matter. But it's not good practice because it does shorten the life of the panel. And with all three of the panels that I have hooked together in series, I was getting about 300 watts input in the winter sun. So you're looking around six to seven hours for a full charge with these panels. Of course, you could get another three panels and up it to just over 700 watts, or you could use different panels altogether. The final option I mentioned earlier is you can also use both. You can use the solar panels and the wall charger and charge it in as little as two and a half hours. So how would I use this? Obviously, Blue Eddy sent this to me because I have an overlanding channel looking to promote this to the overlanding market. And the trouble is with the testing, I don't think it fits in with what I do just yet. When I'm on my trips, I rarely camp at the same location for two nights in a row. So I'm not able to use the solar potential of this. I drive every single day to go to a new location and the car charging on this is just too slow. And it's also really big and heavy. So I don't really think it's practical for what I'm doing right now. Uh, I think something like a dual battery setup is more suitable for me. That being said, I don't think this is useless. Not everyone travels the way I travel. And actually my traveling style is probably gonna change up over the next year. I think this is perfect for people who do like to stay in a single location for a few days at a time, or people who like to set up a base camp and then go travel and explore around the area. The real strength of this is the solar charging. So you could leave this at your base camp with all those panels out, and not only is it gonna run pretty much anything you leave behind, it's probably also gonna be fully charged every single day. It's a way off yet, but we're actually planning on doing something very similar to that. My wife's working on getting a job that she can work remotely. So while I'm out exploring for the day, we can leave this at camp with her and she's fully powered and she's got all those panels keeping her going. This kind of thing is great for those people that like to just go out for the weekends. You charge this up at home, you don't even need the panels. You charge this up at home, it's gonna last the entire weekend. I also think this serves a dual purpose. So not only is this useful for camping, it's really nice to have around the house. Just a few weeks ago, we had a couple of ice storms here in Kentucky. Thankfully, my power didn't go out, but people down the road and friends that live close by had their power go out. If you have something like this, it's gonna keep you going. So the next thing to do is test this out on several things. And one of those is gonna be a household fridge because when the power goes out, you wanna keep your food good. Now, every time I do this, I always have comments saying, will it run certain things? This one, the answer is yes, it will run it. If it plugs into a regular outlet in your house, it will run it. But of course the question is how long? And you can actually calculate that yourself. All you need to do is divide the total capacity in watt hours by the number of watts that your device uses and it gives you the hours that it will run. Now most devices, they'll have some kind of rating on it and sometimes that's the maximum draw. So my fridge says something like 1300 watts. My household fridge says 1300 watts, but it doesn't pull that much constantly. But for a lot of things, you can get an idea. So with this one, you've got 2000 watt hours rated capacity. The depth of discharge is about 90%. So you're actually only able to use about 90% of the capacity. So it's about 1800 watts. Let's say you have something that pulls 50 watts. You'd take 1800 divided by 50 and it gives you 36 hours. Anyway, let's go test out some fridges. Something like this 12 volt fridge just really isn't worth testing. It uses so little power about 35 watts that even if it was running the entire time non-stop this would last well over two days of course this doesn't run non-stop this actually cycles very little uh, and in temperatures like i've got today it's probably about 70 degrees inside the vehicle this thing's going to run for about two weeks obviously if it's hotter it's going to run for less but it's still I'd be here forever. Now I've plugged my main kitchen fridge into the Blue Eddy and it's running, the compressor's going, and it's pulling between 120 and about 130-ish watts. Occasionally, actually it's dropping down. Now it's been cycling for longer, it is going down. So I'm gonna leave it for a few hours and get an idea of rough average pull per hour, average wattage usage per hour. I'd be interested to see how low it is. When the compressor was running, the fridge pulled between 100 and 300 watts, with 0 to 50 watts being pulled while it wasn't actively cooling. The average draw was 100 watts over the entire runtime, so with the 360 watts of solar, you could, in theory, run the fridge indefinitely if you had sunlight every single day. Without the solar, it ended up running for just over 18 hours. Next up is something I probably should have started with, because it's usually the first thing that everyone asks for, and that is air conditioning. 
You wouldn't believe how many people comment looking for some way to air condition a tent or a camper. So let's plug this in and see what we can do. Well, it's going. I have air conditioning. I have cold air coming out the front. Unfortunately, I don't have the exhaust on the back, so I have hot air coming out the back. So it's no good right now, but it is definitely running the air conditioning unit. And this isn't a small air conditioning unit either. Um, when I first started up, there was a massive spike and then it went up to around 700 watts, but you can see as it runs, I don't know if you can see that any better if I move this closer. Uh, but right now we're pulling about 960, it, it keeps climbing. I guess as the compressor goes, it pulls more and more. So we're up to about a thousand watts. Let me switch this off. That way, hopefully you can hear me. So you're probably looking at about an hour and a half to two hours when running this air conditioning unit with this battery pack. Now this unit is designed for large rooms. So I decided I'd check out how it run a camper as well. So with the air conditioning in the house, it wasn't particularly successful. So what we're gonna do now is try out the Blue Eddy with my buddy's RV, Class A RV here. He's actually wanting to borrow this this summer because his RV has about 100, 105 amp hours of batteries in it. And this is obviously closer to 150. So it's gonna really add to the capacity. So what we're gonna try out is pulling out the connector here that he usually plugs in when he gets to a campground and plugging into Blue Eddy with this and we'll run the air conditioning in there and see if it can handle it. So right now the Blue Eddy is the only thing that's powering the RV. We've disconnected all the batteries from the inside and it's running the air conditioning constantly. And the air conditioning is pulling about 800 to 900 watts. And unfortunately it's a very old unit. Uh, it's 17 years old. And I think the ones you can get these days are a little more efficient, but at that kind of rate, you're gonna use the entire battery here in about two to maybe two and a half hours. One of the good things is because this takes 700 watts of solar, if you're somewhere that's sunny and you do need to run the air conditioning more, you could plug all of that up during the day and it's gonna extend the life of this significantly to the point where you're gonna run this down very little if you're getting the full 700 watts of solar. One of the things we talked about is you could potentially run the air conditioning uh, during the day off this and off solar, and then at night, turn on the generator, charge this up fully, and you'd easily get this thing fully charged overnight. So what we found is that this isn't really practical for running air conditioning. And unfortunately, there really isn't anything like this that is. You'd need a huge bank of batteries to run air conditioning overnight. At least during the day, you could set up 700 watts of solar with this and you could keep it going for six, seven hours, maybe a little more. And it's the same story when it comes to most heat sources as well. So when I have a heating unit like this one, this thing pulls about 1400 watts. You know what, let's plug it in, let's find out. So yeah, you're looking at about 1400 watts. So running this thing constantly, it's gonna last about an hour and a half. It's definitely not gonna last the night. Of course, this is a larger unit. You can get smaller ones. I've seen some on Amazon that are around 400 watts and some as low as 250 watts. If you've got something smaller and it's more designed for a small tent, then it's gonna last a lot longer. You may get five to 10 hours out of it. But if you're really looking for a way to heat a tent or a camper, electrical heat's not the way to go when you've got a battery. Because again, the best way to do it is to have a huge bank of batteries and something like this just isn't large enough. What this is ideal for, for when you want to heat is running something that uh, runs on a fuel. So something like a diesel heater or like my Propex heat exchanger instead. If a heater or heat exchanger is not an option for you, then something like this is a great way to stay warm. I've got two electric blankets plugged in. This one's 110 volt and it's uh, twin size. And then this one's 12 volt and it's more of a throw than it is an actual blanket. Uh, if you're six foot one like I am, that won't cover you. Uh, and actually this one's, I, I think it's the better option anyway, because I've got it on high right now. And it's about, they're both about as warm as one another, but this one's only pulling 10 watts more. You've got this one's pulling 60 watts versus 50 for the 12 volt. And at 60 watts, it's easily gonna last the night. It's gonna last more than 24 hours. So I've only got one more thing I wanna test now. And before I do it, I actually probably need to take this hoodie off because it's getting really hot in here with me running all of these sources of heat. So whether you're using this for a power outage or you're out camping, you may wanna use it to prepare some food. And I'm gonna use it to prepare the most important meal of the day, which is of course, coffee. And here I have, this was sent to me by Southern Girl Coffee and it smells amazing. So we're gonna try it. Got my kettle, which uses more power than your typical little coffee maker. So we'll plug it up and see how it does. And of course, 
most people with their coffee like to also eat breakfast. So we will prepare ourselves some eggs on my electric griddle. And uh, I think I want my eggs on toast. So we'll try the toaster too. I don't think this can run all of them at once. I'll try it. It'll probably cut off and start beeping at me, uh, but uh, it'll definitely run them all individually. So let's turn on the AC and we'll get the most important thing going first. What should we plug in next? I guess we'll try turning on the electric griddle. So what are we pulling with that? Oh, 1400, 1500 watts. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna handle the electric griddle. Do we wanna delay our coffee to try this out? I guess we will. Oh, it doesn't like that. Yeah, it's beeping at me. So I've got a fault code now, so I can check out my fault codes. It says inverter overload, which I knew was gonna happen. It can't handle all that stuff at once. So we will do one thing at a time now. Turn that on and the water's going again. While the water's boiling, let me show you this. There it is. That's the stuff. I just realized I don't have any butter for my toast. And I guess I could have brought my fridge up here. I got a little 12 volt fridge. I could have plugged it into this outlet, had that cooling that at the same time. I could have had solar panels plugged in, keeping it charged. Like it just, it does everything at once. Oh yeah, look at that. I think I overdid it just a little bit. It's not quite runny enough for me. Anyway, that's it. I feel like I've tested enough stuff here. Like I said, if it'll run on a wall in your house, it'll run on this. I think this thing's awesome. I'm definitely keeping it. I'm gonna keep it around the house for emergencies. If the power goes out, you know, ice storms, wind takes the power out, anything like that. And then in our longer camping trips in the summer, we're gonna set up like a base camp. We'll have this out charging on solar. So I'm really looking forward to getting out and using this. If this is something you're interested in getting, I've put links to it in the description. If you've got any other questions, definitely drop a comment. You know, I'm happy to test this out with a few things if I've got them around the house. If you found the video useful, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.